What's up? What's up? What's up, Solar Warriors? What's up, Solar Warriors? Today is Tuesday, May 28th, 2024. My name is Jarrett McAllister, the virtual solar pro. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with your fellow solarpreneurs. Let's kick off this Tuesday training. I got Mr. Jonathan Bernasso out in Vegas, Mr. Tom Cotter coming to you from another part of the world. Where are you at, Tom? I'm in San Jose, Costa Rica right now. So good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Pura Vida, man, nice. Pura Vida. That's it, dude. I love Costa Rica. Just before Pura Vida. We started yes, I was just talking about how my first time in Costa Rica was 10 years ago. I flew out there for my 30th birthday to a digital nomad spring break retreat where we did yoga, raw foods, uh, trek through the jungle and the rainforest. I jumped off a 90 foot waterfall, get out there, be adventurous. It was truly incredible. Back then in 2014, I was on a mission for location, freedom and independence. Um, and sure, look at here, landed it, found it, rocking it. Um, Costa Rica is an awesome, awesome place to live. And you know, what's cool about this platform is you could literally be in Costa Rica, living the dream, eating mangoes with monkeys, um, all while helping homeowners go solar at the same time and building a team. So pretty. That's a band pretty. name. Mon Mangoes with monkeys. I think that's a band. <laughs> well, look, man, um, let's kick off this meeting. We have an awesome, awesome training for you guys with a special guest. Uh, but let's talk about some success stories like we do every single week. So, if you've been absolutely crushing it in the solar game here with power, we want to hear from you. Um, there's one individual specifically I want to hear from because, man, he's on top of the leaderboards. He is in what we call a flow state. Joseph, are you with us? Hello. Hi. Hey, thanks for having me on. I knew this day would eventually come. It's been two and a half years on the power platform. And uh, man, I'm just, everybody I'm talking to, it's just, I have this down now and I'm I'm just so damn freaking, I'm feeling it, man. It's like, I feel like when I walk in there, they're signing up. I, I'm spent, I'm buying non-competitive leads. I'm buying leads, non-competitive. I'm competing against five or six other companies. And guess what? I'm winning them all over. I'm I'm earning their trust, and I think that's what it's really about. Like you know, I, I'm just I think I'm going to end up with about three more deals before the end of the month. Got two new players aboard. People are calling me. It just it, I just feel like this last month it's just been like zero to sixty, man. Love so, it. Love it. What market are you in? I'm in Western PA. I mean. I, I've been in the solar. I've been in this business for seven years. I, I started with Solar City, Tesla. I used to set the world on fire, but I got a lot of canceled. Now I get these people, they sign up and I get them to stick. And I love the platform. The platform is, you, you can't beat the power solar platform. There's nothing like it. When you're customizing a proposal for a homeowner and you're building their truck by showing them all the different options, you can really build your value and like why you should work with me. So I'm, I'm just really excited, man. I'm just feeling it. Feeling love it, it man. Love yeah. it, dude. We're all feeling it for you. I love seeing your post on the socials. You're absolutely crushing it. Shout out to boom, pal, solar Joseph out in Western Pennsylvania, man. So keep it up, dude. Crush it. Hit those numbers, man. Just rocking it. So great job there. Let's move over. Mr. Carlos Martinez. What's up, dude? It's been a while since we've heard from you. How you been? Uh, a lot better now. Last year was a big roller coaster. Um, a lot of health issues in and out of the hospital half pretty much throughout the whole year. But um, my success story is I just started feeling healthy enough to jump back into it full steam. Got a lead on Friday, contacted the homeowner in Virginia on Saturday, and literally just signed the contract uh, right after I got off the Zoom call with uh, Grow Florida with Dave Ringo. So that deal is done. 
moving ahead full steam. Nice. Carlos. Great, man. That's awesome, brother. Great job. And yeah, as we were saying, just before we kick this thing off, I love your background, your new, that that's your new logo. It is. And, and it took me a while because I'm trying to rebrand myself out here where I live because people have such a bad taste in their mouth from a local company called Meraki. And I want them when they think of solar, they think of me. And so I'm kind of rebranding myself. They see this guy in the wheelchair. I'm going to put some stuff on my chair to where, you know, they see the logo. It has, it'll have a bar scan on it as well on the back of it. So they can actually read it, scan it wherever I go. Um, so I'm, I'm ready to roll. See what Love you it, did brother. there. I, uh, ready to roll. Great job, dude. Right on, Carlos. Appreciate it, man. Always love hearing from you. One Scott, more. you got your hand raised. What do you got, brother? Good morning. It's a brisk 85 degrees here in Las Vegas. Uh, it was great. Woke up to a phone call this morning from a client. I love these. She got a referral for me uh, from her sister, and she finally wants to do her second house, which I've been trying to get her to do. So two deals and one from one phone call this morning. So I know they'll, they'll close. I'm, I'm positive. So that's exciting to wake up to. Love it. Love it. Two for ones. Let's go. Let's go. It is, it is solar selling season right now. Um, we're just a few days from June. It is kicking off. What's crazy is we're hearing from homeowners, right? It's usually towards, you know, middle of summer, end of summer. And they're like, my bill's wild. I got to do something about this. Jared, can you help me go solar and save some money? I'm like, absolutely. If you want to save on that summer bill, should have hit me back up in like February. But over the past few months, I'm getting hit up from homeowners about their crazy off-peak bills, right? Like, Jarrett, my February bill where it's short and it's a cold month and, like, it's outrageous. It's more than my summer bill was last year, and they're scared to death of what's to come. Um, so, yeah, it's incredible. You guys get to be the heroes. You get to save people tons, hundreds of thousands of dollars. No money out of pocket, all while saving the planet. It is truly an incredible opportunity. Tom, did you want to add something to that? Tom Connor. No, I just, you know, I, I want to give a shout out to just a couple of people who are also on that tier three leaderboard. You know, Richard is number one. Christopher is number two. That's Chris Callier. And uh, also John Dix is uh, number seven with, with three tier three partner sales. So John is newer to solar. And uh, he's working a bunch of Home Depot leads, and so is Christopher. So congratulations to the three of you. Uh, also, Jay, on the, the sales ranking on the left-hand side of the dashboard there, Jay is in number one spot also with, uh, with our sales organization. So congratulations to, to all of you. And uh, I, had, you know, I just had a thought real quick. I'm in Costa Rica right now with my wife and 12-year-old daughter. And... One of the sayings that they have here in Costa Rica, it's what the Ticos say. That's a, a Costa Rican person. They say, con luz, con luz, with light. Um, and that's used to describe a pregnant woman. And it means she's with light. Uh, and I, I thought that I was kind of looking, you know, through Costa Rican sayings and culture and doing some reading before our trip. And I thought that was an interesting thing you know, children are very revered. Every young person matters here. And um, I, I just thought that was relevant for the work that we are doing in solar, that we not only bring, you know, the blessing of solar to different families across the United States, but we bring light with them. You know, even within the solar industry, there's some shady stuff that happens. But, you know, with the way that we operate, the way that we want to help people, we're, we're bringing light to them, not, not just literally solar, but um, kind of the good news uh, of how they can go solar and how it can, make, it can make a difference in their life. So just think about that cone loose today, this week, as you're doing business, doing family stuff, um, the light that you bring into conversations, the light that you bring into your family, your friendships, and your work as well. So back to you, guys. Boom. Right on. Great job. Love it. Love it. That's a mic drop right there. So, so freaking cool. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, that. thank you everybody for sharing your success stories, bringing the light, 
and you know we are you know shining light on savings and saving the environment and just building a business and it's awesome awesome opportunity all right jonathan what do we have coming up Yes, one or two minutes here and we'll kick it off to our uh, training today, but it's it's quite interesting hearing some of these success stories and Tom in Costa Rica with the light and Joseph Matterchek with earning the trust and getting momentum and flow states. It's all going to roll into today's training, guys. I can feel it. So with that, a few quick announcements. As always, Monday, power hour to build your business, Tuesday team training, um, there's lots of trainings in powercalendar.com, including an onboarding if you're new here. And make sure to attend your market development meetings as well. Um, also, the first Monday forum, Mondays at noon Pacific of the month, is an awesome operations update. So try to put a few events on your calendar. But I want everyone to check this out real quick. June 8th, this is important. There will be massive announcements I guarantee it. So just block your calendar Saturday, June 8th, three days before my birthday, just throwing it out there. Uh, June yeah, 8th, my wife's birthday. <laughs> you got to love the Gemini's. Uh, June 8th, guys, 9 a.m. Pacific. Just block your calendar for three hours. We're going to have amazing trainings, big announcements, and a Jonathan Budd is going to do the CEO call as well. So make sure to attend that virtually. And then... Um, Last two things here, make sure to check out the Power World annual in-person event, September 19th through 21st in Orlando, Florida. The hotel has already been picked out, so you can go ahead and get your discounted room right now. Um, if you go to powerconvention.com, you can get access to all of this information and much, much more. And uh, I believe we may even have Danny Pessy as one of the many awesome speakers that's going to kick off the uh, the convention. We're working on that right now. So that's going to be epic. And lastly, taking us through the end of the year here, Solar Saturday, the next master class, which is quarterly, is going to be August 7th. Power days are local in-person events. Then we'll be together in Florida, another master class, another power day. So the trainings here between in-person and virtual and our platform backend CRM and our community, I mean, that's our secret sauce. No one, no one is close to where we're at on all of those epic things. So with that, everyone, I appreciate the patience. We are on time, 10, 15 a.m. Pacific. So thank you, Tom. Thank you, Jarrett. So I'll have the pleasure of introducing our uh, next speaker, this gentleman um, is the owner of Giving Business Soul. He is one of the reasons why we build homes in Mexico. We do the impact journeys. He's one of the reasons why we all do breath work. A lot of us have done his 90-day challenge, no grains, seed oils, added sugars, alcohol. Um, and honestly, guys, you know, not to be cheesy, but it really, in the last three, four, five years of knowing him, it's it's really changed my life quite a bit. It's allowed me to unlock my highest potential, not just in health and business and being grounded. Um, so I give this gentleman a lot of, lot of credit for being one of my mentors and a good, good friend. So today, um, the intention is for sales professionals, business owners to transform their approach to sales. He does a series called Soulful Selling. And if you want more information, you can become part of his Giving Business Soul community or take some of his courses that he offers. So, you know, we're going to learn about authenticity in sales, practical techniques, overcoming sales challenges. Um, and it's really perfect for any salesperson or business leader looking to enhance their sales approach, build genuine rapport, like we just heard Joseph Matterchek doing with five to eight sales this month alone. Uh, achieve greater satisfaction and effectiveness, goal setting, and so much more. So with that, I will hand it over to Francisco Hara, Giving Business Soul. And I believe he's also here with Jose um, as well. So take it away, gentlemen. All right, Jonathan, man, thank you for that wonderful introduction. That was, uh, yeah, it's really nice to receive that and to Tom and Jared, thanks for putting this on. Uh, Rick Joseph as well. I know he's out in fit for service. And um, 
But yeah, just thank you all for for having me. It's certainly a, a distinct pleasure to be sharing with you all here today. Obviously, power is very special to me in so many ways, uh, not only because of my two great Gemini friends, uh, Chris and Jonathan, but also because my son, uh, Trey Hara, is also on the power platform. Uh, he got introduced about a, a year and a half ago at uh, out in Texas, and he fell in love with the platform, the mission, the leadership. And uh, he, he he had a really strong year. And what what year are we in? Twenty four and twenty three, and uh, or twenty two. And uh, you know he put a lot of money away, put it in crypto, and now he's going to college and kind of doing a little bit of part time. And uh, so all I have to say that certainly uh, Power's got a real special place. I've had the privilege also of traveling with Jim Bunch, going out to Peru with him. So anything that I can do to add value to the platform, it's certainly a, a, an immediate yes. So I got the text from Rick and I said, Hey, I, I'm in. So, you know, when I get asked to speak a lot of times, you know, in, in sharing the many facets of the giving business soul philosophy, this seems to be a favorite it is this soulful selling approach. And I thought to myself, you know, what can I share here in, in 40 minutes that can bring a lot of value to sales professionals and, um, and, and what I'm here to share with you really is is a is a radically new approach. I mean, I think all of us who have been in business and in sales and entrepreneurs, we've all heard of the ABCs, the always be closing ideology. But truth of the matter is that sort of process is already like really played out. And I think here in 2024, we can feel that energy moving anytime you go into a sales dynamic, you can you can literally feel that. And so today, instead, I'm going to be sharing the new ABCs, which is really always be connecting. And although that sounds fantastic and, and a little trite in so many ways, but today, I really want to give you the principles that make the art of human connection really possible. And And inside of this, always be connecting and these principles of the art of human connection the idea here is that by the time that you leave this 40 minute presentation, that you have a really nice frame of how you can begin to approach your clients to really begin to make a, a difference in your guys' sales careers. I mean, you guys are all wonderful sales professionals already. And I think just adding a few of these elements, um, you know, it, it really can do wonders for you. So in order to kind of frame this, uh, you know, this entire methodology, I really want to share with you how it came to be and ultimately how it emerged from my sort of personal and painful journey. So, you know, my, my, my journey in business really begins when I'm 13 years old. My uncle hands me a first business book, and it's called How to Win Customers and Keep Them for Life. If you can imagine anybody that has children at 13, like, I love this book. You know, and so that on its own was an anomaly. And as I like to say, it was like a musician getting his first instrument, and I just started to read everything I could because my uncle, who was a very successful entrepreneur, along with my father, he said, hey, business leaders read six to eight books every single month. And he had a huge library and I became a ferocious reader and I read everything that I could in the section, his books, his library, as well as the business section of the bookstore. And so I graduated with a degree in economics from BYU and um and I'm not Mormon. That's normally the second question that comes after Brigham Young University. Uh, my uncle says, hey, you want to go to college in Utah? And I just didn't even think twice about like where it was going to be. And I just said, sure. And then I find out it's like 99% Mormon. But it was a fantastic education. Got a degree in economics. I graduate. I come back. And I find myself in the mortgage industry. And given all that I had read, being bilingual, serving tables through college, it was literally like a shoe in for me. And so immediately I start to sort of, you know, use my skills inside of that industry. And within two years, I opened up my own office. And this is now in 2002. And I have kind of a meteoric rise, if you will. Uh, within three, four years of being in the business, I have close to 100 employees. I got four different offices through Southern California. I'm literally on top of the world. And all of a sudden, at the end of 2005, I am diagnosed with a stage three cancer. And I immediately just sort of get hit with a ton of bricks, if you can imagine. Uh, I had recently read the Lance Armstrong book regarding testicular cancer and his overcoming of that. And I immediately knew what I had obtained. 
And I remember going to the doctor when I get back and um, getting that phone call. And I, Kobe Bryant <clears throat> was a big hero of mine. So I don't know if you've ever seen Kobe Bryant with that sort of fist in the air and just kind of pumping his arm back and forth. I hang up the phone and I start doing the same thing. I got the news that I had already had cancer at a stage two and that it was in my lymph nodes and possibly through the major organs. And, and the reason I started to fist bump, if you will, was because, you know, I felt like all great leaders, leaders needed great adversity. And I really didn't feel like I had faced mine just yet. And I thought, this is my opportunity. This is my moment. I'm going to, I'm going to go through this. I already had my first son. I have a successful business. At the time, we're pregnant with our second, and I have a lot of inspiration and motivation to get through this. And certainly, I go back to the, the, the doctors, and it is stage three. I got tumors all throughout my lungs, and I immediately decide I'm going to go through the process, go through all of it, and go through a very rigorous chemo intense. I lose all my hair and it really just kind of reoriented me from that m moment forward. This is where, you know, uh, I think Jonathan, if you remember when we were out in, um, uh, the, the, what is it called when we, when we went all with power out there, um, the impact which, journey? yeah, the impact was like journey, something that we were all at the impact journey. And I shared with the table this this sort of motto that I leave with, live with, and it's like sucking the marrow out of life. You know, after that moment, I really decided I was going to suck the marrow out of life. And, and I came back with a vengeance. And then a year later, I am on top of the grenade that pretty much starts the Great Recession. And, um, and I had to follow a multi-million dollar business bankruptcy. And I thought, this is okay. I've read enough books and I understand how this is going to go. I, I can climb out of this as long as I have my beautiful wife, my two children, and then the devastating blow, which is the divorce, right? And so then all of a sudden I go through the three great life awakeners, as I like to call it. Great life awakeners, because anytime you go through a death of any kind, certainly losing all your money in this world is like going through a death. Losing your most significant relationship, it's going through a death. And then obviously facing your own mortality. These are death portals. And when you come out of those or go through this, you seriously have a, a pretty big awakening, if you will. So I found myself in the dark night of the of the soul, if you will. And when I emerged out, um, I really had a much different perspective. And I wanted to do things very differently the second time around. The entire first time around, I just was trying to get to the top of the mountain, go as quick as I could. And, and that certainly led me to do things in a way that I don't think really established a really great connection with the people around me. And so when I went through the dark night, I ended up finding spiritual psychology. I didn't even understand that spiritual, spiritual psychology existed, much less that you can get a master's program in it. And so I went to the University of Santa Monica and enrolled in 2010 and one of the things that the professor said on that first informational evening, they said that your outer experience right will now. be a reflection of your inner reality. Your outer. A hand. Sorry, one second. There we go. <clears throat> there we go. So the, 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 the professor said your outer experience will be a reflection of your inner reality. Your outer life experience will always be a reflection of your inner reality. And when they said that, I immediately knew kind of what was at play for me at that moment in time. I was still in the mortgage industry, but I couldn't get any momentum and any velocity. Because of the depression that I was in, I was certainly still applying all the same principles that got me to the top, but nothing was working. That's you true. know, nothing was working. I was literally doing zero loans, two loans, one loan, zero, nothing was working. So when they said that sequence of words, I immediately knew that the world was reflecting back to me my own shame, my own guilt, my own feeling of inadequacy and worthlessness. Certainly, I was doing all the right things, but internally, I was a, a, a mess. You know, I really hadn't processed everything that had happened to me. So once I was taught those spiritual psychology frameworks, I immediately started to reconcile and address my pains and my traumas, and I started to properly learn how to heal. And as I started to do that, my business started to, to really take off. 
And, and the reason it started to really take off was because I really learned what I'm about to teach you is about this art of human connection. I ultimately learned how to work from the inside out. I learned that this is not an externally driven world, but it's actually an internally driven world. And the more that we address our pains, take care of our bodies, and really take an authentic pro approach to living life, business and life just start to really beautify itself and self-organize itself in, in ways that I think in a lot of ways can feel quite, quite magical. And so it was then that I also kind of became really interested in what Jonathan talked about with the philanthropy. I became interested in that intersection between business and philanthropy. And that really became the genesis of the Mortgage Phoenix Group. I decided to put these two types of organizations within one structure. And that became the genesis of the organization I established in 2012 called the Mortgage Phoenix Group. And in the Mortgage Phoenix Group, you know, uh, I love that you were mentioning that, Tom, about how they refer to Con Luz in Costa Rica about a woman who is bearing child. Uh, because, you know, when, when I was bringing these two types of organizations together, I said, well, what goes first, the masculine or the feminine? Business is masculine. The nonprofit or philanthropy is feminine. What goes first? And I said, well, it's actually the feminine, right? Nothing, you know, if, if you're coming into this world, you're going to be coming through the womb. <laughs> you know, it's from the darkness and into the light. And, and that light is, is, is the beginning stage. And so I said, hey, I want to build homes for women and children. And I want to use my, my business and my mortgage acumen to move that endeavor forward. And that really became the origin of this entire giving business soul philosophy. And really interestingly, I'm going to sidetrack for a second. I don't know if anyone has seen the Joe Rogan, Terrence Howard uh, podcast that recently came out. But that was uh, wild. yeah, wild. that was wild, right? And so you guys see the logo that I got here. That's the flower of life. So I've been studying Walter Russell for over a decade, and the Walter Russell was who Terrence Howard cites. And I have that book called The Universal One that Einstein said, man, I should have studied much more of, 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 of Walter Russell's work and what Tesla said. When he saw Walter Russell's work, he literally said, hey, humanity's not ready for this for another thousand years. This is one of the main books I have on my altar. But one of the very fascinating things that he depicts in that book, The Universal One, he says, we do not live in an electromagnetic universe, which is the way it's commonly referred, because electric is masculine, magnetic is feminine. He says, we live in a magnetic electric universe. It's inverted. You know, it's magnetic electric. And I, from that standpoint, it also makes sense of what we're bringing forward, that we have to lead with the feminine principle, the life-giving principle. And, and then use masculine energy to move that endeavor forward. And that really became the overall philosophy of giving business soul. And what I discovered inside of this approach uh, of, of doing business in this way was that there was a, a different approach to all of this. So I'm going to share my screen, which I forgot to do here. Sorry, guys. Um, and, and in this, I'm going to just share with you the principles that ultimately allowed all of this to come together. And this is really what we call the soulful selling approach. And here we go. So again, it's the art of mastering the art of human connection. Again, that was my story that really highlights exactly how all this came together. These were the principles that I learned in the spiritual psychology principle, not only to mention it's just a synthesis of about 800 books that I've read to bring this sort of philosophy forward that is now the giving business soul philosophy. So the very first thing I want to share with you is this idea about the essence of the beginning, the essence of the beginning. So any time that you are about to go into a sales consultation, this is something to really take into consideration is what is the energy that you're coming from when you are about to engage with a client? You know, like, what is the essence of the beginning? In other words, what frequency are you birthing, you know, your actions from? And in order to kind of frame this for you a little bit, I want to show you something that I think all humanity needs to get very familiar with, which is the map of human consciousness. This is taken from a seminal uh, book called um, Power Versus Force. It's Dr. David Hawkins, who is a huge sort of player in the consciousness idea and what he maps out are all the human emotions from the very lowest to the very highest. Uh, you guys were all mentioning the flow state. The flow state is at the very height 
at the very top of this map of human consciousness. And it's considered the flow state because from a definition standpoint, flow state uh, literally reads in the definition, it is a heightened state of human consciousness where you feel and perform at your absolute best. So the idea that we're looking at doing is always sort of being in that state, in that heightened state. But in this idea of what is the essence of the beginning, it's like most people that begin to go into a sales dynamic, they have a lot going on inside of themselves. Typically, maybe things are not going well in their life or a transaction is going awry and they're vibrating from a, from a lower end vibration. And so it's just to bring awareness to when you're about to go into these spaces to just bring more awareness into it. And also, where are you leading from? Are you leading from scarcity? You know, are you leading from the idea like, how do I close this sale? How do I make money here? I need to close, I, you know, I need some money in the bank. You know, what do I need to say in order to get them by? In, in, in other words, the NLP, the Neuro Linguistic Programming. And instead, you know, how about coming from this higher place, right? Leading from service. Like what is the service, the best service and the highest service that I can provide for my clients? You know, and, and what does this client and my audience really need from me? And ultimately, like, how do I wow my customers, you know, so that they can recommend me into with their friends and the family? And so when you come from the higher origins of this map, it's felt, you know, it's felt people, people like one of the, one of the great superpowers of, of our humanity is that we're considered sentient beings. Sentient comes from the Latin word sentir, which means to feel. We're very feely, energetic beings. And I think as we're starting to evolve, we're starting to really pick that up. And so the necessity to really kind of bring presence, bring understanding into that when you go into these sales consultation, I think is, is the starting point of what I wanted to share with you. And then now that we kind of have established, you know, again, what's the frequency that we're coming from? You know, this old way and this sort of NLP ideology, per se, is this is this idea of, of you know, finding commonality and, and maybe looking through people's social media to find, uh, you know, things that you might have in common. This idea of mirroring, maybe doing the mirroring and the act of listening where you're just sort of maybe repeating the last three or four words out of the sentence to, you know, sort of, um, yeah, inform the other person that you're in that listening mode. And this is the old way. It, it, it certainly works. But I, again, I, my, my sense is that in our evolution, as our species is going through right now, this is this feels like AI to me is kind of the way it feels, you know, and instead this this new way, you know, this this authentic way, this soul based way, it's more like divine intelligence It's like artificial versus divine intelligence you know and the highest aspect of that map is actually when you're your full authentic self you know and so today i want to share with you these principles of the art of human connection that make you a very authentic human being and so it's seeing through soul-centered eyes heart-centered listening perception checking and open-ended questions and i'm going to go through each of these uh right now in just a second but as a starting point you know, one of the great movies over the last, you know, maybe 10, 10, 12 years was this movie Avatar is a movie by James Cameron that really struck a chord uh, in, in one of, and became a worldwide phenomenon. And I don't know about you, but there are certainly certain movies that sort of are informing us and giving us codes. And, and that one certainly was one of them. And one of the main aspects of that movie, if you remember, you know, the avatars would say to each other, like, I see you, I hear you, you know, and it really, I think, frames this idea here that at a soul level, what we are all looking at, at, at doing is we, we, or we, what we really desire at a soul level is to be seen and to be heard. And when you can provide sort of a, a, a container, as I like to say, a space where you're allowing people where they feel seen, where they feel heard, you know, that just starts to create a nice flow inside of the conversation. You know, it's not about memorizing scripts. It's really about being present, about, 
you know, seeing people for who they are, listening intently with the heart. And and one of the one of the things that I'll I'll share with you here inside of the very first principle is something that'll really help to to give you or give people a sense of being seen when they're in your presence. So the very first thing is seeing through soul-centered eyes. I think most of us who are here recognize uh, what P.R. Chardin has said. He says, we are not human beings who are having a spiritual experience, but we are instead spiritual beings having the human experience. And that's 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 a truth that that has we've all recognized throughout the entire you know human history that we are a soul before we are a body that idea is con luz with light is that there is a spiritual being inside of the womb of the woman and that being is is a soul right and so when we start to engage with people with that frame that this is another human having or another soul having a human experience we can sort of soften a bit you know i don't know about you i'm 47 but it's like being human is rather challenging it's hard you know and 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 when i get an opportunity to really engage with somebody it's just like how are you man how's it going how's it going you know it, it, it's just having this this deep sense of curiosity in the other person and 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 one of the, the the codes here that I want to share with you is this idea of when you are engaging with people, look at them through their left eye. You know, we've all heard the adage that the the eyes are the windows into the soul. And it is true, but it's more true to say that it's, it's the left eye. The left eye is the one that's connected to the heart. And so when, when we're in a sales dynamic, just softly gaze into that left eye. You're not staring, you're gazing softly. And the other thing that you want to do here is also breathe through your nose while you're in that consultation. Uh, one of the books that we share inside of our community is the book Breathe by James Nestor. And it talks about how we literally have forgotten how to breathe as a human race. Half of the human population breathes through their mouth. And when you breathe through your mouth, you activate the fight or flight system. And when you activate the fight or flight system, you produce cortisol and you're literally vibrating at the fear frequency, right? Because when you're in fight or flight, you're in fear frequency. That's the very bottom of that map of consciousness. And instead of the invitation here is to breathe through your nose. And, and when you're engaging, it's almost like you're digesting, you know, you're really you're really processing what they're saying and and certainly looking through their left eye bringing attention to your breath understanding you have another soul having the human experience begins to create an energetic container where people feel safe and they feel trust and really that is the base of allowing sales to happen very organically and and, and in a very easy and elegant way the second here is heart centered listening this one was a big one for me. It was the, one of the principles they taught us on the very first weekend. And it's just this idea that as humans, we simply have only been listening from one of the, one of the four modalities that is actually required to listen from the heart. You know, for most people, we simply listen for information. And as soon as there's a pause, you know, we're immediately shooting off and and, and engaging with that person, you know, as it might relate to something that we have in common with what they just said. And instead, I want you to really begin this idea of being other focused inside of your sales consultations, you know, and, 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 all, and, and instead of just listening for the information, you know, really, it's also about listening for the meaning behind what people are saying. There is the information that they're communicating but on a deeper, more subtle layer, they're trying to communicate something. And, 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 and what you want to do is, again, breathe through your nose, go deep into your body, gaze in. It's like, what is this person really trying to communicate in this moment? You know, and, and when, you, when you start to listen deeply, you know, you'll start to extract you know, the deeper reason why they're in that meeting with you. 
you know, in, in the case with me with, with mortgage and, and all the years that I did the mortgage, it was like, you know, just really understanding that maybe that they came into the consultation, you know, and, and what they were sharing with me, I could really feel that they've been in preparation for a long time. They, they decided to let go of their a newly formed couple, decided to go live back with their parents and, and, and so that they could save money for rent and that they could pay off their debt and, and sacrifice and essentially prepare for this next chapter. You know, so when, when you're really engaging in deep listening, you can, you can hear those things and then sort of language them back so that people really get that you're present with them. You know, and, and and I'll show you how this will all come together here in a second. And also the third thing is about listening for the energy on the words. Women are so good at this. You know, it's like you're talking and you're speaking and all of a sudden you're at this tone and all of a sudden you bring up some other subject and the tone changes, you know, and it's like immediately you can cue in that something's up, you know, and when you're deeply in your body and you're 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 in your 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 rest and relax mode inside of your nervous system meaning you're you're in your sympathetic or your parasympathetic nervous system instead of your sympathetic nervous system you can really pick those things up the the, the fluctuation that's happening on the energy that resides on the words and then and then also it's also about just giving people your undivided attention your undivided attention, giving them your full presence. So it's it's about listening for information, listening for the meaning behind the information, cueing in on the energy that's fluctuating on the words, and then giving them your undivided attention. One of the things that I used to love to do when when I would have clients come in is that I, I would I would put the phone on airplane mode and put it in my dresser in front of them. I would I, I'd want it, I wanted them to pick up the nonverbal cue that there was nothing more important to me in that moment than this inter human interaction. You know, it was it was it was an unconscious cue that I that I'm here. Like I, like you're the most important thing in this moment. I don't care if there's a phone call and I would literally I'm going to put this on airplane mode and I just would put it right in there. You know, and and when you when when you're able to 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 do that, you know, again, people really get this deep sense that you're fully present and that you're very authentic. And, and again, I think when people feel authenticity, they feel trust. And at, and at, and if they feel trust, then then they begin to like you. And as we all know, people do business with people they like and they care for, and that they can trust. So so that's the second principle there. The third is perception checking, perception checking. And, and, and in this one, this is a, just a very simple principle to make sure that you are properly hearing people, you know, because again, I'm sure that we have all had the experience where you see two people dialoguing and, 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 and all of a sudden you realize that they're not on the same page. You know, where I was like, oh, that, that, he caught that cue and went off in the other direction. That's not, <laughs> they're no longer on the same page. And so what, what perception checking is just a, a process that really gives client the confirmation that, that again, that you are hearing them correctly and it ultimately achieves eliminating discord. And this was one of my favorite things to do inside of that client consultation where imagine clients would come in and and you know they would they would in the way that i had my system set up i wouldn't even talk to clients before they actually came in because i was doing rather large volume and so i had a full-fledged system handling different aspects of it so i had sort of a, a, a production partner that would handle the incoming leads from all my real estate partnerships and they were their role was just to get me people into my consultation and, in, and I'm kind of an old school dog, as I like to say, it was like, I just want people in front of me. Their role was just get me, get me people in front of me. I don't care if they were, they're ready to buy right now or in two years, I want to talk to humans. It was kind of the, the way I would tell them. And, and once, once they would come in, if you imagine, you know, I would, I would really just kind of set the energetic container. I'm going to give you a really powerful nugget in just a little bit about how to increase the vibration in a room. 
it's it's kind of in the realm of of magic and i would set the energy the vibration in there you know they would walk in there's a water fountain move in and the music is just great and i would go in and i would you know immediately sit with them and do what i mentioned about putting the phone away as i walked in and i would start to immediately you know debrief them on the notes that i had already read and kind of ice break and do that kind of thing and and uh and then immediately we would go into this process of of me sh asking for or sharing my why which i'll go into in just a bit and then getting their why of why they have come into the consultation and after they're sharing for a little bit you know i would literally just sit there and have my mouth closed breathing through my nose looking at them in the left eye and i just i just mm-hmm mm. And I and I and I learned to do not not to do it as loud because I used to do it quite loud, you know. But I would just kind of like I learned to just kind of like taper it off. But it really felt to me like I was digesting everything that they were saying, you know, and 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 not listening from my mind, but listening from my belly, you know, from my body. And and once they would share something, I would I would you know they sometimes would share for five or ten minutes, and I'm, I would say to them at the close of that, you know, I I, I hear you, I hear what you're saying. Um, you know, it, it, this was sounded really important. So let me just make sure I heard you correctly. What you were sharing with me just a moment ago was that, you know, in order to arrive here, you know, you had to go through quite a bit of sacrifice. You've moved out of your parent, out of your own place, of your own apartment, moved back in with your parents. You've been there for a total of three years, and you've been literally paying off a bunch of student loans and credit card debt. And, and and saving money for your down payment and you finally have arrived to a point where you guys feel like you guys are ready to make this big move of owning your own home and being able to start a family and and really kind of making sure you're in the right school to, you know and i and then i would conclude i said did i hear you right and they say yes yeah francisco you heard me you heard me well thank you thank you for that you know but it was like perception checking was really just such a powerful thing where you're just validating and then again, giving them that idea that, hey, I'm really listening to you. The fourth principle is asking open-ended questions. So in this, in this idea here, you know, it's just, again, about not asking questions that end in a yes or no, but asking more questions that I think are based on your own curiosity and really seeking to understand I kind of like the idea of kind of going into these sessions, obviously with curiosity and, and kind of like playing detective, if you will, you know, and, and, and really understanding core motives be, behind why people are engaging with you and, and asking really powerful questions. And, and it's just kind of like that old adage, you know, it's like you, the quality of your life is dependent on the quality of the questions you ask yourself, right? Well, the same thing I think goes in for sales dynamics. You know, the, 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 the better questions you ask during that sales consultation, uh, those better inquiries, you know, the better, you know, stuff that, you know, clients will get or you'll get out of your, your clients. And, and when you have, you know, a lot of really valuable information, that's really when, you know, you're really able to take that and then position your product and your services in a way that, makes him understand like, yeah, this is going to be perfect. You know, not only that I feel great inside of this conversation, something about you makes me feel like I can trust you, but simultaneously it's like, you know, you position your product in a way that was based on the, on, on the power of the questions that you're asking. And a lot of them for me was really around, you know, the, the, the basic what, why, where, how, how does this feel? How would that feel? What would that be like for you? Things of that kind and and that's where I think, you know, it really starts to um, assist you. So what I wanted to share with you now is is something that we have sort of coined as the five, six rule um, and, and uh, helping to identify the why. So I was mentioning a little while ago here, this is a really powerful process to help you identify core motivation. And this is really a process that you can take for yourself, but certainly... Um, you know, when, when I really wanted to get really clear on why it is that I did mortgage, this was a process that I, that I took. And it's simply a, a process of asking yourself, like, why do I do solar? You know, and then taking that answer that you immediately come up with 
and you isolate it and then you deepen and ask why why is that important you know and then you take the answer from there and you you continue to ask yourself that question until you really get to something that really is that has sustenance and has and has real real soul real heart in it and for myself when i when i went through this process of like why do i really sell mortgages certainly you can make good money and this it, it's great but at the end of the day why i discovered why i did mortgage was because i grew up in a way that i i i feel was privileged because my father owned a lot of real estate and he managed his real estate very effectively and through that he was able to become an american dream open restaurants and have a, a decent sized chain and and really provide for himself and his family and his community something that was quite amazing and and given that i had seen what he was able to do i wanted to provide this for for my clients as well you know and given my economic and, and accounting background and everything i i really felt like you know owning real estate is the fastest way to grow wealth in this country and if i can provide mortgage services to help you manage that debt accordingly you know to help you achieve prosperity you know that's really why i do mortgage to help others achieve prosperity through proper mortgage planning and so what i would always do like when my clients would come into the consultation i would immediately state that you know i'd go through a little bit of an icebreaker debrief on the notes and i say hey before we go too much further what i want to share is like really why i do real estate i feel like owning real estate is the fastest way to grow wealth in this country and given that i'm in the mortgage industry i feel like the best role that i have for you is to help structure your finances correctly and efficiently before you buy and then once you close on your home help you and guide you along some financial milestones to help you pay off that home as quickly as possible you know i would say that i'm more like a financial advisor that helps to structure your mortgages and i would say how does that sound they said that sounds amazing i said okay well what i'd love to do is like i really like to discover you know now really you know why is owning real estate so important to you or why is buying this home really important to you and this is where 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 we put all the four principles really together you know and 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 gaining this core motivation because they would say well you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, the, the most important thing for me in, in buying this home is to make sure I get in, in the right neighborhood. And I said, okay, I, I, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. Again, that's my heart center listening. And I forgot to give you that code, but one of the easy ways that you can really activate that heart center listening is that every time they conclude, you know, just say, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. You know, so I would do that when I'd ask these questions and I say, okay, I, I hear you. I hear what you're saying, but, but help me understand, like, why is it so important to be in the right neighborhood for you? You know, and they would say, well, it, it's really important because, you know, as I mentioned, I want to start a family and, and, and I, I just want to make sure we're in the right schools district. And I'd say, oh, that's, that's beautiful. I, I, I really commend you guys for wanting to get your family started and, to be in the right school district for your, for your, for your future children. And, and I, and I, I love that. And help me understand though, like why, why is that right school district so, so important for you? You know, and they say, well, you know, it's really important because, um, you know, I, 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 I didn't go to college and, and, you know, there's a really great high school there and it's a prep high school and I want to make sure that we just give our kids that that right trajectory in life, you know, and and I'd say, OK, now I said, oh, this is making great sense. Like, I, I, I certainly can appreciate the fact that you're trying to provide something for your kids that, you know, you, you were not afforded, you know, and, and, and making sure you're in the right school district with that right prep school, high school to get them into college. But, you know, if you don't mind, let's go a little deeper. Like, what, why is, is that, you know, why, why is that so such a big thing for you? I mean, certainly people always want to get in the right school district, but it seems like there's something behind that. And, and I would have picked up on something there, like, you know, like a texture in that. And they said, well, you know, it's just that, um, you know, I, I want to make sure I also get the right payment because, you know, my, my parents lost their home when I was in high school in the 2008 crash. 
And, you know, and that just kind of demoralized me. And we ended up moving out and all my friends that I had essentially, you know, I had to leave them behind and, and my grades just plummeted and I kind of did some stupid shit and things. And I decided I, I just didn't want to go to school anymore. And, and I got angry at my parents and, and I just kind of took a, a, a left turn in my life and, you know, I want to make sure I got the right payment and that way I'm not stretched. And so now I'm obviously getting to something really, really powerful here. And I say, wow, I say, you know, thank you for sh for sharing that. I, it sounds like that wasn't an easy time in your life. And I can I can certainly understand how something so significant caused you to kind of take a left turn like that. And then, you know, you decide not to go to college and he says, yeah, and I, and then also, you know, then I just, and I just kind of became a blue collar worker and I got a great job, but man, I really just want to set my, my kids up so that they're able to go to college and get white collar jobs and really do what I was never able to do. And it's like, you could then feel the texture there, you know, it's like, again, you can feel fluctuations happening and I would just kind of wrap it all together. So again, I've asked this why question five, six times, and I've gotten now to a nice, beautiful thing. And I'd say, Mr. And Mrs. Saller, so, so it sounds like to me then the most important thing for you is making sure you're in the right, the right, the right neighborhood with the right payment so that you have financial stability for your future kids so that you can really set them up in the right schooling and, and, and ultimately help them get to you know, the right college so that they can have really, you know, thriving careers. And, and ultimately, you're able to give them something that you feel that you you've you sort of lost out on. So if we're able to achieve that, you know, through this transaction, how, how would that make you feel? You know, so I would literally take the entire, you know, sequence of why acknowledging, isolating, deepening, and just sort of combine it all into a sandwich, you know, and then ask them, how would that make you feel? And, and when I would just let it sit, I love silence in conversations, you know, you got comfortable with that. And, and you can almost kind of feel like a shift in energy. Like, man, like if I could do that, I mean, I just feel like, like as parents, as a father, like I've done, I've done my role, you know, I've done what I've come in uh, to do and, and set my kids up because I'm all about legacy and I would just feel amazing if you could help us with that, Francisco. And it was like, boom, right? So this process here, I've taught to many sales professionals and, and certainly it takes a little bit of effort. Like first, I would recommend that you get clear on your own why, you know, ask yourself why you're in solar, you know, and then deepen, isolate, deepen, isolate, deepen until you have a very succinct why statement. Once you have that succinct why statement, you know, at the beginning of your consultations, drop that in the beginning and then just shift it and say, now with that said, help me understand, you know, why, why are you inquiring or why is it, you know, important for you to, to, to think about going solar? And then, and then just like I just shared with you, you're, you're just acknowledging, isolating and deepening and you're going to get to the core, especially if you're using those, those, those principles of the art of human, human connection. So, um, and I think, I think, you know, obviously with the power platform, I think like once you have that component there where you got their why, you know, at that point, you certainly want to lead your, your clients, right. Um, you know, having a certain system and processes and the next steps already lined up so that, once you really establish that human connection, you, you, you use these principles of authenticity to connect. And then once you have that, and now you're positioning your product, you certainly want to lead them. You want to make sure you're communicating and stealing confidence and ultimately giving them a game plan that what's next on the customer journey. And when you're able to, to combine sort of this art of human connection, these principles of authentic, authenticity, with a thorough system, with thorough next steps, and you're really clear on the next uh, the next milestone on on getting them to to the finish line. That's where this thing becomes like powerful. You know, if you have 
the ability to connect on an authentic level, but then your systems are not very thorough and they're breaking down. It's like, you're going to lose people, but combining both of those things will certainly put you in a league of your own. So kind of to, to bring this all to a close, as I mentioned earlier, one of the things that I thought I would, I would give you today as, as a kind of a nugget is this idea of the drop of joy, a drop of joy, right? It's a simple practice to uplift the energy and the emotions as you go into a meeting. Okay. And this is something that we, we teach again inside of our community. But as you can see here again, from the map of human consciousness, joy is at the very peak or at the very top of this map. And so what the invitation here is that right before you jump on a zoom, right before you enter a person's home and, and are going to go into the consultation, spend a few minutes before that consultation and that one-on-one -on -one meeting and activate this drop of joy, which is a simple process where you simply close your eyes. You remember a recent experience where you felt a tremendous amount of joy, a tremendous amount of love where your heart was just sort of open and just overflowing. And this could be a memory with your with, with your child, with your lover, your friends, you know, place where you were just in that flow, in that presence of God, per se, you know, and it just felt incredible. So what you do is you go into that memory and, and, and relive it. Literally in a meditation, go back into that moment in time. Your body doesn't know the difference. And then evoke it, meaning seduce it into the moment again, you know, like literally reconfigure your energy to be like it was in that moment and let that smile sort of make its way through like you were in that, in that, in that moment in time and, and do it sufficiently where you literally are feeling it. And what happens is that no matter where you are on this map of consciousness, you're literally going to be increasing your vibration you're going to be increasing the vibration and, 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 and energy is transmitted. So now as that feeling is there, now you open up the zoom, you go into the room and, and all of a sudden there's a, a there's an energy that's uplifting. And, and if you could see energy, what you would see is this toroidal field that literally is going off the human body. When we're in the, in the contracted space, our toroidal field is very small. But when we get into the, the, the presence, into joy, into love, that toroidal field literally becomes enveloping, you know? And what happens, what we know is that when people come into a sales consultation, when they come into a sales consultation, they literally are going into, um, you know, they're coming in at a very low level. They might have the fear you know, they, they're, they're apprehensive, they don't trust. So they're coming in on the low level of that human consciousness. And then you're up here. You know, so what happens is that you start to lift them higher. You start to bring them into, into the higher state. And, and, and all of a sudden, again, you're just going to allow a lot more flow to be happening through the, through the process. So again, this is the process, practicing the drop of joy. Just find a quiet space, focus on positive memory, breathe that feeling in and carry that joy as you walk into it. So uh, again, I just want to say thank you. I didn't realize I just looked at the time and I'm like, oh my gosh, I just went over. So uh, I tend to do that. I do apologize uh, for keeping you a little extra here, but if you'd like to stay connected, this is my Instagram account. Certainly I would invite you to follow uh, as Jonathan mentioned, we have a community here. It's called Giving Business Soul. And I've been spending the last few years mentoring and coaching individuals to unlock their highest potential through actually doing internal work, through doing authentic inner work. And what we offer at the Giving Business Soul community are integrative transformational frameworks. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, when we really do inner work, you need frameworks, you need lenses to see the stuff that's holding you back. 
And what I typically help people do is resolve their triggers, their emotions, the things that are always happening in their day-to-day -day life that unbeknownst to them is keeping them from their full potential. But when you understand these frameworks and really begin to do inner work, you start to evolve. You start to move up that map of human consciousness. And nothing, my friends, nothing moves the needle like evolution. It affects your relationships, your finance, your health, all the areas that you've been looking at up-leveling. So with that, thank you so much for your attentiveness, for being here with us. And uh, I certainly appreciate um, all, the, uh, all the messages here coming in. So thank you guys. Yeah, give him some love in the chat, everybody. A lot of praise even during the, the training that we need more of this stuff. A lot of appreciation, a lot of thanks for the content of this training. Um, and guys, I went ahead and put the social media links you can follow, including the QR code that he had in there as well. Put it in the chat again. So go ahead and check out the social media, check them out, schedule a call. And there is an in-person event June 29th for those in Ranch Cucamonga, Southern California. Frank, uh, that's about a month away. Yep. Yeah, and it's you... called the Ascension Summit. And uh, I've actually been doing that for like the last year. It's a great event where it kind of conceptualizes all this and goes a lot deeper. And we do breath work and certainly give you the frames of how to begin an evolutionary process. Very cool. There it is in the chat again, guys. Um, the website as well as some links and the in-person event. So definitely check that out. It's helped me tremendously. You know, it's funny. I don't know about you guys, but the whole time I was like, I use some of these techniques in relationships and it just works fantastically. And it's, <laughs> it's relationship selling, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and when you connect with someone on that level, boy, you know who they're going to sign up with and do business with. So big shout out to you, Francisco, your team, Jose giving business soul, uh, your new podcast studio. I can't wait to watch all these podcasts that you're going to be pumping out as well. So thank you, my friend, for the help today. Yeah, thank you, brother. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, Francisco. Thank you, Jared. You got it, man. Great to see you. Thank you for coming on. All right, you guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this week. Incredible. Show Francisco some love in the chat. And uh, Jonathan, I don't know if you have a couple minutes. We could stick around if anybody has some uh, some questions. I'd say let's get to work, y'all. We have three, four more days left in the month before it's June. Summer's here. Contact every client, lead, ambassador, referral partner, grow the team. Put your things on the calendar you're going to be attending. Set your goals. Um, let's get to work. All we do is collect electric bills and tell people we earn income with solar. And we do it from a rooted, grounded, relationship, soulful selling manner. Let's get it. Love it. Let's get it. You guys, All right, you love. guys. See you next week. Bye, everyone. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning into this episode. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening. You can also follow me on the socials, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. All those links will be listed below. Now, if you're looking to get started on the path to selling solar virtually, look no further than Power. Power is a decentralized solar platform that gives you the ability to sell 100% virtually in 25 plus states and growing. Their platform gives you the advantage to offer your clients a variety of different panels, inverters, roofs, batteries, and even EV chargers. Brands include Enphase, SolarEdge, Tesla, Franklin, and Span Smart Panels. Power offers multiple zero down financing options, including loans, PPAs, and leases. And with their revolutionary cost of goods sold model, five different streams of income, and world-class training, there is nothing else like it in the solar industry. If you're looking to get started, go to power.com. That's P-O-W-U-R.com slash virtual solar pro slash join and start selling solar virtually today.